Welcome to Hawaii. Uh, my name's Josh. Uh, I've made a bunch of mistakes speed flying, so hopefully uh, through my trial and error, you guys can have better luck with high wind soaring. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of high wind launch techniques today. Uh, go over a couple things not to do and uh, hopefully get you started on a safe track. Now this is no replacement for a coach or a mentor. That is how you should learn these sports. But if you're gonna be dumb, at least be smart about it. Here we are at Makapu, um, looking over the corner right now, over the ridge. This is my anemometer, my little wind spinny thing. I'm going to hold it up high so it gets a clean airflow. Uh, I'm gonna measure it there. Right now we're looking at 24 to 26 miles an hour. It's a two mile an hour difference. It's good wind. Uh, we are good to go. Um, today we soared the 11 meter Mirages. Mirage. All right, so as far as wind velocity goes, so with speed soaring, we're dealing with minimums and maximums that each wing can handle. Uh, if you're starting out, you're probably on a bigger wing, like a 14 or a 16. Uh, start out in lighter winds uh, maybe, and get yourself an anemometer, I believe it's called. But anyway, the wind spinny thing that measures how fast it's going. Uh, it's a great invaluable tool that is absolutely necessary. Um, start out in about 10 to 15 miles an hour wind and work your window up slowly as you're getting more comfortable with it. But take a measurement of the wind every day you go out and then that way you know where to set your hard limits. If you find your wind limit is 23 miles an hour and it's gusting to 26, don't fly. There's always another day. Right? You gotta learn where these lines are because this is not a forgiving sport. Uh, another thing you wanna watch is the gust factor. Uh, rule of thumb, we usually use about five miles an hour. If it's 20 to 25, we'll fly. If it's 25 to 30, we'll probably fly. If it's 20 to 30, we're not gonna fly. It's gonna, like, you really get a possibility of collapses and some other uh, things that could make you have a bad day. Boom, all right, so. Uh, what we're going to do now is go through my pre-flight checklist. Similar to skydiving, I check my leg straps, I check my uh, waist strap, my chest straps, I make sure my trimmers are set correctly, and I'm going to have my uh, make sure I spin the right direction, uh, make sure the A's are on top, and then I'm also going to uh, put the toggles around my wrists, that way I have direct control. All right, so we are setting up a paraglider now, or this is Patrick Kessler. He is my partner in crime in a lot of this action, these bad decisions we make safely. Uh, we're gonna lay out the speed wing similar to a paraglider. Let's make sure all the lines are clear. Uh, you can save yourself a lot of headache by, deal by clearing your lines before you throw a bag of trash up in the air. Here Patrick has his toggles around his hands. This is very necessary as well. That way you have direct control of the wing as soon as you take off. Some people have a bad habit of leaving the toggles stowed until you throw the wing up. This is a skydiver mentality. You need to have control of the toggles as soon as that wing is in the air. So Patrick is demonstrating a throw up hammerhead style. He's rosetting the lines right now, um, going from bigger to smaller. And he's gonna grab a handful right up by the attachment points. He's gonna grab it all with one hand, with his right hand there and then he's gonna go through the leading edge of the wing, making sure there's no brake lines over the wing. You wanna make sure your nose is all clear. So starting at one side, you work it all the way to the other side. Once again, making sure there's no line overs, no brake lines, uh, that would be uh, messing up your hammerhead. The hammerhead is a cool style. He's better at it than I am. Uh, that's why he's showing you this technique. So he's gonna find the middle of the wing. It's the label. Uh, every speed wing will have a label on it. That way you'll know where the center cell is. <clears throat> then you give it a little fluff and ready to rock and roll. So he's going into the juice zone now. So we were in the rotor. You get your wing ready in the rotor, which is back away from the lip. Now um, he's getting his hammerhead ready to go. He's got it charged up, holding it um, in the juice area, probably about 10 feet back from the lip. He's gonna throw it into the air, get it above the power zone, 
and then control it with his toggles that he's already got in his hands. He's gonna spin the way he knew it and then put all of his weight on his breastbone on the chest strap. You need to lean forward as far as possible. You wanna like be basically balancing your weight on the chest strap as you're torpedoing forward. All right, I'm gonna show you a Cobra launch technique, which is basically a reverse launch, but you bring it up to the side because if you bring it straight up over your head, uh, kid yoink ya, uh, which means take you off your feet, uh, send, you go, send you into the bushes. So uh, you don't wanna have the A's on top, and as soon as I set my rosette down, I'm controlling, I'm having control of the wing. Basically the C's with my fingers around the pulleys, and then my A's. The C's are gonna kill the wing, the A's are gonna bring it up. So I feather it up with the A's, and then I bring it back down with the C's. It's kind of a seesaw effect. With the A's and C's, with the C's, you can actually stall the wing. So as it's coming up, you start to get yarded, you can pull down on the C's, and you can use that as kind of a gas pedal or a brake. Uh, when the wing starts to come up, you're gonna have to run under it, and then actually pull down on the C's a little bit to stall it out so it doesn't overshoot you as well. And once again, uh, this here, these are the bees to kill it. It's all about the bees if you wanna kill it. I rotate and pull both bees symmetrically if you wanna kill the wing. Once again, the C's and D's will send you flying, hit the bees, and then uh, go up, run up and grab part of the fabric of the wing. Because if you have part of the fabric, uh, it'll stop dragging you. Worst case scenario, if you can't get the bees, uh, grab any line and pull it till you get fabric, and then that's how that, the wing will get killed. All right, so what he's doing now is demonstrating how not to kill the wing. Do not use your brakes to kill the wing because it's gonna pick you up off the ground. All you need to do is put a couple fingers on the B risers, it takes hardly any pressure at all, it'll taco the wing, keep you from getting drug off of the mountain. So the bees are the ones to grab. It's all about the bees, about the bee, about the bees. <laughs> but yeah, grab the bee lines, cause then um, it'll taco the wing, you won't get drug. Uh, if you hit the brake lines or the C's, it's gonna try to pick you up off the ground. Brakes are worse than C's, C's are worse than bees. The bees taco the wings. It's all about the bees when you're trying to kill the wing. All right, as far as clothing to wear when you're kiting, Keep in mind, as soon as you strap into that wing, be prepared to fly, because that thing takes off on you sometimes. So before you even strap in, you wanna have a helmet on. Uh, I like she, uh, shin, <laughs> shin, she. <laughs> uh, shin and knee guards, uh, high top shoes. I'm a big fan of those. I wear a back protector, a back brace as well. Uh, just be ready to hit the ground just in case. So you need to turn the same direction every time. That's my opinion. Some people think you should be ambidextrous. Either way, make sure you don't turn the wrong direction when you're kiting. You can turn yourself into a line twist and then lock the steering lines, then get slingshotted into the ground. It's a bad day. So make sure you're turning the correct direction and check it multiple times uh, before you leave the ground and wind and weather. Uh, anytime we're doing any of these canopy sports, the wind and weather is the most important part, or one of the most important parts. Um, look at an hourly weather forecast of the area that you're gonna be flying in. I like the NOAA website, N-O-A-A, -A, and you can actually click in on the hourly forecast uh, and see what the weather is going to be doing, what the wind and specifically is gonna be doing, and your chance of showers, gust fronts, that kind of thing, any kind of variances uh, in the weather. Because keep in mind, once you're in the air, uh, you're kind of up, uh, up to the gods at that point. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a couple other techniques you can use as well, where you start with a nose down. Here at Makapu, there's pretty rough rocks, so you can't really do that the nose down high speed technique. So it's either the hammerhead, or it's the Cobra. I hope this helped. Have a great time out there. Be safe. Once again, please use a coach or a mentor, uh, but if you are just practicing, start in lighter winds and measurably uh, get going in stronger and stronger winds until you feel comfortable. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching and rock and roll. <laughs>